So hello once again, this is Jonathan Miller, Hometown Historian Channel. We are here at Nutting Hall. This is a beautiful home that was uh, originally created for the Michael uh, Lay family. And uh, they had a connection out in Myerstown, which is where the Lay family were, and they had a connection with George Washington directly, which maybe I'll talk about that at another time, that they even have a thing here. Nutting Hall was built between 1823 by, and 1825 by Peter Filbert for the Lay family. I believe it was Michael Lay. It was one of the Lay children, but I believe it was Michael Lay. And uh, I think he even served as a uh, PA representative. But uh, I believe her name's Amy Wheeler Maddox. Uh, and her husband owned this home. And... Uh, her brother Richard Wheeler is actually my dad's favorite author. Uh, he has several books that are signed by Richard Wheeler. Uh, Richard lived here at Nutting Hall the last 12 years of his life. A poet and author of 18 nonfiction military books. Awards the Christopher Award for Voices of 1776 and the Fletcher Pratt Award for Voices of the Civil War. Recipient of the Purple Heart and member of the 3rd Platoon Marine Corps division that raised the first flag on the top of Mount Suribachi on February 23rd, 1945. And this is on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, he actually, Richard Wheeler as well, uh, he uh, did a number of uh, films, including, I believe, Flags of Our Father with Clint Eastwood. He was one of the uh, uh, advisors for the film. But he did a number of uh, books on the Civil War, especially, and they were some of my dad's favorite books. But it's just cool being here at Nutting Hall, where Richard lived the last uh, 12 years of his life. He was an extraordinary man, and uh, like I said, one of my dad's favorite people and uh, favorite authors. Uh, so with that, we'll head on to our next adventures. Thank everybody. So hello once again. I am up here in my game room, entertainment room. I'm actually uh, filming a, a little bit more for <coughs> Richard Wheeler. Uh, these are the three books that my dad had. Uh, I believe this is the one that isn't signed, but these other two are actually signed to my dad. Uh, the Paul Mauer with cordial uh, best wishes, Richard Wheeler. That was 1989. I think that's the year the book was made. My dad knew uh, Richard Wheeler reasonably well uh, but my dad was a huge fan of uh, his writing these are just three of the books um, Sword Over Richmond Witness to Appomattox Witness to Gettysburg uh, these were really did well his first book was uh, the Bloody Battle over Sir Bocce which Sir Bocce was the mountain uh, for Iwo Jima and uh, he actually he got injured pretty severely and uh <coughs> uh, could have died uh, but he uh, I guess the rest of the war then he was in medical care trying to heal up from that and then uh, was on <coughs> excuse me honorably discharged thereafter uh, but he moved to Pine Grove uh, I think talked about a little bit in the, the video at the uh, historical marker that I believe probably his sister put it up I had said Amy Wheeler Maddox I think thought I had seen that somewhere. It was actually Marjorie uh, Wheeler Maddox. Uh, he stayed with her for the last 12 years of his life. He's actually buried in Pine Grove after he passed away. Uh, you have two cemeteries that are sort of, <coughs> I guess you would say probably the western side, but it's up the hill. Because Pine Grove is sort of in a, a little valley surrounded by a grove of pines, basically. And uh, up on the hill up near where Pine Grove High School's baseball stadium is, there's two cemeteries. There, I guess two Lutheran cemeteries, actually sort of unique. Uh, he's in St. Peter's, because I think, I forget what the other one is called, if it's St. John's or something like that. But anyways, he's in the one that would be more on the left when you go up to it. It's the older cemetery, because I believe that's the older church. It's the church that's right across from that Gunkel Cemetery that we did a video on earlier, but... That's where he's buried. But the, the battle for Sir About Bocce, uh, the bloody battle for Sir Bocce, it was his first book. It did really, really well. And that's actually what 
Flags of Our Fathers, which is a movie by Clint Eastwood, was actually somewhat mostly based off of uh, his experiences in that battle. And uh, he was actually a military advisor for that film. He was for other films as well. He was actually a very, very well-respected military historian. Uh, I think for the Voices of 1776, he won a pretty prestigious award there, like Sullivan Award or something like that. And then there was another award he won for the Voices of the Civil War. Uh, there was a little bit of separation between those two books, but you know he did very well. He actually, when he first started his writing, he was doing like poetry and stuff like that because I think it was... And uh, he was born and raised in the Reading area, and he wound up working for a paper there in Reading. And then as he started to go more into freelance writing, he actually was doing poetry and prose and that type of stuff and had some of his writings printed in the Saturday Evening Post, which was pretty pretty big deal. And then I think it was 1965 when he had his first book, The Bloody Battle of Over... Sirabachi. Uh, he also wrote a book called Iwa. Uh, I think he wrote one more book as well, potentially, on Iwo Jima, his experiences there. He did, wrote a book that was on the experiences of the Marines in the Pacific, which is something that was dear to my dad's heart because he was a Marine in the Pacific. Now, he was in the cleanup crews, sort of went through islands like Guam, Okinawa, and some of those where they just went in and, you know, the main army, main uh, Marine Corps were were out at that stage, but they had the, the finishing up crew that sort of some of these Japanese soldiers wouldn't uh, surrender because they were told that we would do all kinds of horrible things to them. So my dad told me this one story, which I've told this story on Cliff's video for Iwo G or for Indian Town Gap for the cemetery there. <coughs> <coughs> my dad said there used to be uh, uh, they had these movie nights. And then they put plates of food out on the edge of the jungle, and the Japanese soldiers would actually come out of the jungle, grab a plate of food, sit in amongst the Marines, watch the movie, eat their meal, go back out, put their plate down, and eventually over time these guys would realize, okay, they're not going to do anything horrible to me, and they'd surrender. So it was a pretty unique idea of, of how to get those soldiers to surrender but my dad said like they'd go out on these patrols in the, in the jungles in these areas <coughs> and there were times guys didn't come back you know it was you get uh ambushed those types of things and you know it was so it was pretty dangerous i think he's my dad said the most dangerous event he had was when he was guarding one of the japanese battleships uh the chinese had been abused so badly by the japanese they took any chance they could to steal from the Japanese. So they would go up to these battleships and try to steal stuff off them. My dad was by himself. He said he only had a couple of rounds too, so he was pretty nervous. And he shot, I guess, some shots into the water next to their boat a couple of times until they finally got the clue that, you know, he would shoot them if they'd come any closer. But he said that was the closest he came to any kind of combat if you will. I mean, even though that wasn't combat but the closest to pop potentially losing his life but uh rich richard wheeler really uh and if you want to look him up there's actually a richard s wheeler as well he'd be richard dick wheeler um out of pine grove and uh but another famous author that uh lived in the small town of uh pine grove uh pretty extraordinary guy a lot a lot of books uh pretty cool legacy that he left you know, he was a hero uh, in World War II as a Marine. So, you know, close to my heart, the Marines are because of my dad. Uh, a couple of my friends are Marines as well. So it's always been something I've been proud of with my dad. Uh, and and Rich, Richard Wheeler was a heck of a guy. And uh, this is uh, a bunch of his story here. And I'm going to, with that, I'm going to say... Farewell and goodbye, and we will see you the next time on our next adventure, and we will see you about town. Thanks, everybody. So I wanted to just quick add on some pictures of some of these books. These are some of my dad's books, actually, I would, which you saw them in the video and stuff like that, but I just wanted to do some pictures. I also wanted to show a picture of Richard Wheeler himself just so you would be able to see who he, what he looked like and who he was to a degree. So really cool guy. Once again, thank you for coming along.